It's often said that you can go weeks without food, days without water. You can go minutes without air, but you can't go five seconds without hope. You have to have hope. And the Bible says the anchor of your soul is not money, it's not fame, it's not all these other things. The anchor of your soul is hope. You see, the Bible says hope is the anchor for your soul. You know, if you don't have an anchor, a boat can drift into unsafe water. And what's interesting is, and if you've ever been on boats for an extended period of time, it's easy to drift. Have you noticed this in your life? It's easy to drift. It's easy to drift away from God. It's easy to drift away from your goals. It's easy to drift away from the person you love. It's easy to drift away from your dream. We are constantly drifting if we are not anchored. And he says, hope is the anchor of your soul. And you can drift without even knowing it. You're gonna need an anchor because you are gonna have storms in your life. You are gonna go through rogue winds and tidal waves in every area, financial, moral, ethical, every area, you're, you're gonna have these mental, physical tidal waves in your life. You better have an anchor. Now the question is, where do you get it? Well, the fact is, when people are in a storm, they typically look to everything else except God for their anchor. They don't look to hope. When people are in deep pain or in deep discouragement or deep despair, they often look at the bottom of a bottle for their hope or some medicines for their hope. And they're looking for somebody to anchor their lives. If I could just get a boyfriend, if I could just get a job, if I could just, you know, whatever. And they're looking outside of themselves for something to anchor them when God says, no, really what you need, what you need is hope. But the Bible says, those who forget God have no hope. Those who forget God have no hope. Now friends, we see the proof of that statement in literally every single sector of our society. That the further away we get from God, the less hope we have. Now the converse is true. The closer you get to God, the more hope you're going to have in your life. The most hopeful people on the planet Earth are those who live closest to God. And the most hopeless people on the Earth are the people who feel far away from God. Those who forget God have no hope. Hope is the anchor of the soul. Jesus Christ is presented in the Bible as our blessed hope. St. Paul presents Christ as the hope of glory. Hope generates enthusiasm and excitement. Hope gives you the power to try again, to love again, to live again, to laugh again. And some of you need to rediscover your joy. Hope produces a joy the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Hope sees the invisible. Hope feels the intangible. Hope achieves the impossible. Hope thou in God. As long as there is life, there is hope. Take away hope and life with all of its fascinating opportunities is reduced to a mere existence. Take away hope and you become a bleak, drab, joyless person. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. People without hope sink into depression and despair and life becomes meaningless. In the life of every believer, there is hope for today. There is hope for tomorrow. There is hope for a supernatural breakthrough in your life. Now is the time for hope. There is hope for your shattered dreams to be restored. There is hope that your prodigal son or your prodigal daughter is going to come home. There is hope that God is going to send a special person into your life. All of you singles, listen to that. There is hope. Our hope is in the living God. There is none like him, not in the heavens above, not on this earth, and not in the worlds beneath, 
from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. He has all power in heaven and in earth. He has the answer. He is the liberator. He is the great way maker. He and he alone deserves our adoration and our servantship. The storm is coming and with him all things are possible. Because it's a matter of time before everybody goes through storms. Cheer up. Cheer up. When you're in a storm, it's no time to have a pity party. Cheer up. Cheer up. Hope must rule your heart. Control your attitude. Cheer up. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It could be so much worse. No matter how bad your storm is, it could be so much worse. So cheer up. Listen, the message of Christianity is victory. Not victim, not depression, not despair, not going through trials. The message of Christianity is victory. This is the faith that overcomes the world. This is the faith that hell can't stop, demons can't stop. You have an anchor that is stronger than lies and, and, and all the enemy brings against you. So, so cheer up. Cheer up and be of good cheer, Paul said, right in the middle of the storm. He's leading you, the scripture declares, from place to place in perpetual victory. Get that deep in your spirit this morning. God's not leading you to defeat. God's not leading you to devastation. He's leading you to perpetual victory. And don't you quit now. You undergird your life. You undergird your call. You undergird your marriage, your business with the word of God. When I go through storms, I don't know why, but the enemy attacks me with a spirit that says, you're insufficient. Insufficiency means not enough education, not enough talent, not enough money. No, but I got enough God. If I've got enough God, he'll take me places that I never dreamed. He'll send me where he wants me to go. He'll pay the bill. Insufficiency, get it off your boat. You're going to the other side. Insecurity, I can't do this. I hear a little voice in my head sometimes when I get in a storm, you, you, you're going to lose. Insecurity, throw it off of your ship. The last one is insignificance. I always hear a little voice that says, no one really needs you. You're not important. You're not right for the part. You just put yourself there. Insignificance. But when you hear those voices in the middle of a storm, that's God saying, I'm letting you go through this so you throw all that stuff off and be who I've called you to be, confident and bold and courageous and stand there in your faith, not in you, but in your anchor. Your anchor is Jesus. The, the, listen. The responsibility is on the anchor, and Jesus is our anchor. He's the rock of ages. Don't lose sight of the shore in the storm. And I realized something. I realized for each and every one of us, if we're gonna be people who literally meet the demands of reality, we gotta have an anchor that can hold in any and every situation. And I truly believe that Christ, that Jesus is the best way for that to happen. You're never gonna know where you are anchored until that uninvited or unexpected trial comes and you're gonna see your reaction. That reaction will reveal to you where you really are with Jesus. Storms do not, uh, storms just reveal what's already in us. When a trial comes, when a tribulation comes, all that is gonna show you is what you really believe. So the point is you better stay anchored before it comes because the fact is it's not like that storm caused me to go off course. No, that storm revealed that you were never linked to the anchor, Jesus. Yeah. Because if your link and your chain was strong, you would not have wavered. You might have moved a little bit, but the boat wouldn't be in the middle of the ocean. It would still be in the bay. And the anchor, it might have pulled the chain and you might have moved as far as that rope is, but you wouldn't have gone any further. My soul is anchored in Him. So no matter what storms come, bring it on devil, because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Well, what anchors you? When a storm hits you, what anchors you? Or do you just drift along with it? The Word of God is our anchor. Now think about this for a moment. Storms are inevitable. Our anchor is immovable. It doesn't move. It doesn't change. It anchors us solid to the rock of Christ. 
The Word of God anchors us strong. Now watch this. Because He is omniscient, all-knowing, He knows where I am in the storm. Because He's omnipresent, He's with me wherever I am in the storm. And because He's omnipotent, He has the power to bring me through the storm. That is the anchor. How do I know that's the anchor? Because that's who the Bible says He is. That He is all-knowing, that all presence is in His presence, and He's all-powerful. The Scripture tells us hope is the anchor of our soul. What's going to keep your soul in the right place? What's going to cause you to overcome obstacles, reach your dreams, is when you are anchored to hope. That means no matter what you face, no matter how big the difficulty, no matter how long it's taking, you know God is still on the throne. You know His plans for you are for good, that He's bigger than any challenge. When you're anchored to this hope, nothing moves you. The winds, the waves, the storms may come. You're not worried. You have your anchor down. In the tough times, when life doesn't seem fair, when your prayers weren't answered, when it's taken longer than you thought, you have to make sure to keep your anchor down. If you pull it up, you'll drift into bitterness, discouragement, self-pity. When you're anchored to hope, it's like you're tied to it. You can't go very far. You may have some negative thoughts, thoughts of doubt saying, well, it's never going to work out, but your faith will kick in. No, I know the answer's on the way. My question today is, do you have your anchor down? Do you have this hope, this expectancy that you're going to accomplish your dreams, that you're going to break the addiction, that you're going to see your family restored? Or have you pulled up your anchor and drifted into doubt, mediocrity, not expecting anything good? I'm asking you to put your anchor back down. The scripture says faith is the substance of things hoped for. You can't have faith if you don't first have hope. Don't put your hope in your circumstances. They may not turn out the way you thought. Don't put your hope in people. They may let you down. Don't put your hope in your career. Things may change. Put your hope in the Lord, in the God who spoke worlds into existence, in the God who flung stars into space. When you have your hope in Him, the Scripture says you will never be disappointed. And sure, you may go through some temporary setbacks. Life will happen. But when it's all said and done, you'll come out better than you were before.